Please join me in uh, giving a warm welcome to our um, guests today, the keynote speakers, Professor Mustafa Diak and Mrs. Um, Sushumna Rao, who are going to talk about strategies for addressing the UN OER recommendations for Francophone West Africa, developing OER in French languages. And bonjour la francophonie, bonjour Mustafa, the floor is yours. Ah, uh, mais bonjour Shaïra, ah, ça me fait tellement plaisir que bon, parce qu'on va adresser des problèmes de langue. Au moins, tu es en train au moins de reconnaître la langue française comme une chose qu'on doit vraiment adresser quand il vient aux uh, ressources éducatives libres. Thank you so much, Shaïra, for the introduction. And I want to just to start by, uh, you know, introducing also a very, very good friend of mine and a collaborator, you know, with whom I have been very, very proud to work with for the last month. And the name is Shushumna Rao from India. Shushumna has been working on different capacity or bringing some uh, kind of transformational change to education that use open education resources. I'm just going to uh, let Shushumna say something and pray for us. And, uh, and we're going to just start the session. Namaste all, uh, and I'm really fortunate. Thank you, Professor, to be part of this uh, presentation. Uh, though I can understand here and there French, I may not be able to speak, but then I am always towards uh, 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 to, to, to get away that barrier. The very first barrier is the language when I talk about OER. And the moment Professor Mustafa talked about this, uh, that we are going to have, uh, proposing this, I said, yes, we'll go about, we'll go ahead. And uh, basically, I'm an education technologist. I'm from Hyderabad, India. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, Sushumna. And I think we can start the, 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 the show. She's going to be running the PowerPoint presentation from India. And I'm going to interact, be interacting to what she's showing, showing from uh, Senegal, you know. Interact, interaction is really key to everything. Really, I wanted quite frankly to start by thanking the organization of the OER camp. This is an excellent initiative, and I am hoping that not only we're going to be furthering it in the future, if that is the case, know that I am really one of your biggest supporters in here. But in the meantime, since we're talking about French language, try to see how you guys can help me out here to be able to bring the French community to contribute in an OER camp that is focusing on that. Uh, the subject, uh, the title here is Strategy for Addressing the UN OER Recommendation for Francophone West Africa and Developing OER in French Language. And uh, if you look at the agenda here, of course, you know, you, you saw at the bottom there people we're working with. I want to just to touch about uh, my own journey. So Shumna, that was good. Uh, my own journey with o uh, to OER camp, you know, very, very quick, and, uh, and, and wrap this part before we start some kind of discussion. I just uh, uh, picked up some, uh, you know, uh, 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 happenings in my life that helped me transition into really global education, really, like uh, uh, leaving my country, you know, after college and going to France for and Belgium for many years and arriving in the United States in 1990, you know, at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. That's the laboratory where they prepared the hydrogen bomb, you know, and stay there a while. And after that, had the opportunity to move to Louisiana, where I was doing a postdoctor postdoc uh, at Louisiana State University. And after so, I joined really my now institution, which is a historically black college and university really in, the, in, uh, uh, in Louisiana. Now here, I want to just talk about some, my involvement with Merlot, and this is at the beginning of the OER movement in 1999. I worked very, very closely with Jerry Henley, who's really my very, very good friend. And again, you know, an e-learning innovation in 2008, dealing with OER, distinguished service to Merlot, digital repository on affordable learning solutions, you know, that I work on and that that was really, you know, had some uh, aura nationally and internationally. The next slide will show you about, we'll talk about a leadership role that I have taken with the uh, uh, historically black colleges in univer and universities. 
And this was starting with, for instance, a partnership with between my institution, the Southern University System in Louisiana, and the California State University System. I talk about Jerry Henley earlier. I invited him in my institution, really, to be able to see how I could adopt what was going on with the California State System to my own system. So that's what just expression and interest and that was a side visit and uh, we draft an MOU to partner in order to, uh, how you call that, adopt and deploy what was called at that point really cool for ed That is the California Open Online Library for Education, cool for ed That was funded by different organizations, including the California state, you know, government, the Bill Gates Foundation, you know, just to able to see how we can build uh, an environment that is called affordable learning solution where OER, you know, services are really integrated to support, you know, adoption within higher education institution. It was a very, very known program, this one. And my intention was, how can I adopt this? For the historically black college and university in the United States around 104, the 104, institutions. And in the meantime, how can I bring, for instance, Africa on board? And uh, this was, for instance, the rendition of the adoption of the California, you know, open library that I show that I adopted for my own institution and help California State University to redesign a little bit, really, you know, uh, 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 the, 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 the uh, open education practices component of really this kind of portal. So if we go to the next slide, this was what I deployed at Southern, at the Southern University system. Uh, it is quite frankly sophisticated environment in which I even brought, you know, some component like virtual laboratory. I do a lot of research in the STEM area, you know. So every research that deal with science, technology, engineering, and math, you know, that use OER, in my research group at Southern University, that's really one of the main components of that. So if you look at the environment now, I brought into then that environment, virtual laboratory that you can see there. We're going to share with some links so that you can visit and uh, just experiment with all this. And we have also a career and technical education there, you know, for really workforce development that was added to this portal. But if I go next... And uh, next and next, that's just going to give us the different feature of the thing. Uh, and since we're sharing that so you can access it. If I go to the next slide, we go, we go, then we won an, an, an award during the Innovation International Conference 2006 because of the work that I have done using the Cool for Aid and adopting it in a historically black college and universities. I go to the next slide that uh, triggered really a lot of things here because one of our goal that was, here is something that is working in California. How can we use the model, you know, of open education resource deployment, you know, and use it into, uh, with the historically black college and university, you have a distribution of those universities, the history of these universities during slavery, where black people were not really allowed to attend institution of education. That's what triggered, you know, the creation of these different, you know, uh, 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 colleges and universities situated in the southern part of the, 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 the United States. So if we move to the next slide, you're going to see that from here and the award, we engage different other institutions to be able to deploy within their own institution the same platform that I talked about earlier, the open education resource and uh, affordable learning solution portals there. They deployed in their own institution. You're going to see that while doing that, I, my intention was bringing the 105 universities in, uh, of HBCs in America, those American institutions generally partners with higher education in Africa so that I can bring there a network really, you know, with some kind of commonality in terms of culture to be able to deploy, deploy OER, run some research, 
and contribute to the adoption of open education resources in foreign and the African diaspora. That was really the holistic idea really around this. That's why here, if you look at it, we have the virtual University of Senegal. That was really the first, you know, African institution and country that really adopted this platform, really, that we built for them as well. Let's go to the next slide. And all this is really talking about certain number of things. What I show you at Southern, here is the deployment, for instance, with the Virtual University of Senegal. You can see, bienvenue sur uh, la bibliothèque ouverte numérique pour l'éducation. Yeah. And uh, uh, so that, that was for the UVS. We go to the next slide. You can see that from here, I started now building what, what, what was called the HBCU Affordable Learning Solution Network with all the HBCUs. So we're giving you some link to go and visit and understand more. If you go to the next slide, uh, one thing that was quite frankly natural from here, I wanted to start now a summit as part of the Innovate International Conference. That's one of the biggest conference in the United States dealing with online education. So I started then this summit that was very, very big success and ran it during four years. And after that, I had to back up from that position and uh, let it be run now by some, somebody else. So these summits are still running, but I had to back up and just take some other challenges really. And we can go to the next slide that shows um, uh, some initiative that I have, uh, like for instance, addressing diversity, equity, and inclusiveness, you know, goals with open education resources. This is really a framework that we all need to pay attention. In everything that we do, the DEI component there, you know, gonna frame it quite frankly nicely for the year to come during COVID and after COVID. If I go to the next slide, it's gonna be pretty much I initiated also an outstanding executive leadership award. I was under the leadership of that to give the leaders to be able to involve them in what we're doing and get some buy-in. I started really outstanding executive leadership award. As you see really on the, at the bottom, you know, uh, right, you see the former uh, uh, Ministry of Higher Education of, of in, in, uh, 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 in Senegal whom I gave an award really during those sessions, really. If you go to the next one, the next slide, uh, the other thing that was really significant, that is really Quality Matters, which is really a global organization leading quality assurance in online, in online and digital teaching and learning environment. This is really a global institution, very, very well recognized. I've worked with them since the inception of the organization, and right now I am a member of the Quality Matter International Committee to see all those quality assurance best practices can be, you know, transposed really to adopt when we deploy open education resources. And that global organization has really 13 members in the board of directors, and I am one of them really to look at really international possibilities and how can we bring really this knowledge there. I think this was quite the, 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 the this next slide gonna be talking about uh, while I am touring everybody that I did in America, I make you know, clear that all the things were replicated you know, in Francophone environment. Like here that is with the Virtual University of Senegal, whom I visited every year, trained faculty on OER and quality assurance. I have many, many training like that in Africa. And this was in French language as well. And we can, we can I think I share already a reference on that. If I go to the next slide, uh, that brings us to something that I really, you know, we need maybe to think about. And I'm going to pause. And I'm going to give the mic to uh, Shushum Narao. Uh, thank you, Professor. So where uh, we came to the actual, uh, uh, the keynote aspect of it. Uh, before that, uh, before uh, we really continue uh, that, the question that comes to my mind is what actually COVID taught us? Y you can answer as either unmuting yourself or type in chat box, you know, because we are all uh, somewhere or the other, uh, first we are a human being, right? And then into some profession. And then it affected in many ways, 
So you can express your thoughts as a learner or as a user or as a teacher or as an academician or as an official of an organization. What exactly COVID taught us? Somewhere or the other, definitely we got affected. So uh, how, how you interpret that? We just would like to know about it. Professor, you would like to say something on that too? Yeah, I would definitely would like to say that because we would like really to get every participant really to react to this question really. And, and quite quick, me, I do know that while everybody is thinking and writing something, I want to just to throw there something that I have learned quite frankly during COVID really. The first thing is that we were not ready, that is for sure, because the transition and the integration on open education, the integration of ETET in education, you know, we did a lot of lip service, particularly really in developing countries, but we did not put the resource where we needed them. That was quite frankly something that I have learned. That was in the, the other thing that I have learned there is that uh, COVID really was, in my opinion, very, very transformative because it provided some, you know, uh, uh, how you call that, transformational changes that are extremely significant. Number one, at the leadership level, the issues that we had had in the past is really convincing our leaders. Yeah. Now they are aware. Trust me on that. And I can give you a lot of anecdotal examples on that. Our leaders, at least, they know what EdTech is, most of them. What is about open education resources? My institution right now, I receive an email for the upcoming semester. They're starting to identify courses that are using OER at some point. Trust me, I had run that fight for more than 15 years. It took COVID to open really the mind of folks. The third thing that is quite important, and I'm going to limit it to four, that is that really that pushes a little bit to the readiness level in terms of technology. Today, I am in Senegal, right? And I am using the internet like any other really, you know, participant coming to us from all the other countries because the bandwidth is okay, you know? The infrastructure is getting there. That means that because of COVID, we have a level of readiness that is seriously remarkable, you know? All right. the countries that you know now are putting some money really to be able to do that. And Shushumna, the rest yeah. is just this. Because of we needed some contingency plans, we don't want to forget really the cash quality assurance aspect of things. Yes. Because uh, during the COVID, we have adopted different technology very quick to solve this, but quality assurance, we're going to have to get back to it. Thank you so much, Sushum. I wanted to add that and give you back the Thank mic you. for your for your collection. Yep. Thank you, Professor. And Chaira was also uh, quoting there. Yes, I do agree. And uh, I second that point too. And as uh, Professor also quoted that uh, more than a decade now, I'm also training various faculty in India on, uh, on OER, utilizing OER, repurposing OER, I must say. And I always, uh, whenever I teach them any tool, be, being an education technologist, I talk about definitely about OER and repurposing them. But then not really a good response as such. Of course, there are very a few um, uh, good souls who would understand this openness, right? They come forward, but not many. But then uh, during pandemic, I could really see a massive change. The first thing is, yes, we are not ready, but we are in a hurry to complete. Teachers are in a hurry to complete that semester some way or the other. The, grab the technology, grab whatever is available, just do it. But then as Professor is quoting, where is the quality? And also yeah. now I, 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 I'm looking at it that people, especially academicians and then who are into this uh, teaching and learning profession, they're, they're starting to realizing the importance of OER I really, I really, I have seen a huge change about it. And I think uh, I'm going to write about this and pretty soon uh, my experiences also past decade and how is it and just two years, how it transformed. I hope you all agree with me and anybody in the participants, they can just respond to this and, and then we'll move forward. Thank you. Sir. Anybody would like to?
No? Yeah, but, but very, very good. If we can have them, quite frankly, until the end of this talk, if you have anything to share with us, please yeah. put it really on the chat part because what we're doing right now is, quite frankly, that is qualitative research. Yeah. We want to know what do you think, you know, that's going to help us maybe or other community in the future. So don't be shy. Share with us. OK. OK. But let's move with uh, really the other part of this uh, presentation here. Where it, it is, it is very, very significant what we really about to discuss and witness and that's the UNESCO's OER recommendation of 2019, where we have all the member constituents really to abide with this recommendation. It was covered enough, and I, I we're not going to spend some time here because I'm sure everybody attending here know what we're talking about. But the next slide, I want to just as well, at least to caution us, really, to ground this recommendation on DEI. I talked about it earlier in flexible learning, you know, framework, because inclusiveness going to be seriously the key things if we want to do this right. If we're trying really to service all students, no matter where they're coming from, you know, if I have two students in the classroom as the equivalent of 100 students in that classroom, I just want to make sure that every single student is trying to get everything that he needs to get to be successful. And for that to happen, we need really to ground it on research, really. COVID had taught us that, you know, scientific research is quite frankly important. We need to base things on what? The research and the science, really, you know? There are a lot of development there in research in terms of learning science, for instance, that we need really to pay attention in here. The concept of inclusive design, that's why I put it at the bottom there. That is a design that considers the full range of human diversity with respect to ability, language, culture, gender, age, and other form of human differences. There's a lot of research going on around this kind of topic, and that encompass everything that we're talking about. Like, for instance, really, you know, students with disabilities, all those are really part of that inclusive framework that we're talking about, seriously. We, I, I, we talk about really, you know, uh, uh, the UDL framework, all that really is inclusive of our view of that research really somehow. We need to frame the recommendation of the, of the UN, you know, around sound scientific research as we move. This is extremely important because those who are old enough like me understand that in 1990s, we had some issues, if you recall, with, you know, interactive multimedia. We got to a point where there were really two schools of thoughts. Those who think that it was effective and those who thought that it was not. If you do a literature search, still, those school of thought, they are still there. That's what we call the significant difference, really, groups and the non-significant difference group. In this case, we need to base all this in science and research, really, for all these recommendations to make sense to everybody. So if we go to the next slide, I mean, if we frame this and really and look at OER, you know, and the language barrier things, the graphic that we have here speak by itself, really. Look at the English, you know, occupying what? More than 34% of the resources that are available right now on the internet. That is in English. You, know, you have some other area like, you know, German and Spanish trying to, to, to catch up with a lot of these things. But really, if we are serious about what we're doing, you know, the world languages we need to take into account of those as we move so that we don't leave anybody behind. That is what inclusiveness is really about. That tells us here, looking at French, quite frankly, we don't have anything there, really. We need to do it. Now, uh, uh, I, I'm going to just decipher that thing. We give you a link. But really, we have some coalition of willings that are really forming right now. And I wanted to recognize here 
uh, the, 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 the UNESCO, really, the International Council for Open and Decent Education, and the French Digital Library for their pioneering work, really, to be able to promote, really, open education in France. The second coalition that I am talking about here, and on the first one, I really would like to recognize, you know, the, 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 the work that has been done by, uh, you know, uh, 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 UNESCO Dakar. They are doing an excellent job to leading really the, the, the chart here with this first coalition of willing. The second coalition of willing is really the coalition of willing with, you know, which, that's the next one, Raul. Uh, the second coalition is really the one that, uh, you know, Sushumna Rao, you know, and myself, are really over at some point in partnership because we are both a member of Merlot and the Skill Common H5P. So we're gathering some partnership here, including H5P. We have the H5P catalog of India. You know that we have the H5P OER hub now, which is really an international community. We have a new startup right now. I am here in Dakar for that startup that Shushum Narao and I are really leading, for instance, that is the, 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 the uh, Digital Education Consulting Group. You know, We have the Digital University of France there, and in the middle there, purposefully, I put there the ULET Foundation because for some months now, we are engaging with the ULET Foundation leadership because I need money and we need money to be able to implement what we would like to do, you know, for Francophone Africa, really. We need some resources, really, you know, to be able to do this. So this coalition, if, we, if you are interested in joining our, uh, our coalition and contributing to our goal to promoting, you know, open education resources at least in Africa, targeting, you know, Francophone Africa, in Lusophone Africa, we are really inviting you to get in touch because we may need really to work with you and see how you can contribute. Now, uh, our initiative when it comes to uh, Merlo and Skill Commons with association with uh, Sushum Narao from India, that is just how can we re revise and remix with a new technology that is really, quite frankly, being well adopted, really. That's the ideal platform for us to, to, to really be able to deliver on the promises of open education resources, to be able to revise, you know, to remix resources, right? To bring the, 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 the resources and be able to localize them. If I build a resource for Senegal, if I want to transport it, for instance, to, you know, India, what can we provide the other parts so that they can use it, modify it, and adopt it for their local environment? These were really the big promises, really, of OER so far. And we think that H5P is giving us maybe that way to get there. So if we go to the next slide here, I think uh, uh, that was pretty much talking about really the open education practices, you know, uh, with the Merlot and Skill Commons and Rao and I are really leader in this with somebody who's quite frankly known globally, you know, Jerry Henley, the executive director of Merlot and Skill Commons. You know, we are working there together to be able to enable really this international community to help us, you know, build that uh, Francophone infrastructure and truly the Lusophone infrastructure. So if you go to the next one, the next slide, we're just going to give you the same thing. But here are some key stuff here that are really to wrap up things, really. If you look at it closely, a bird eye view of the need assessment. Number one, quality assurance standards and processes are really needed. We have worked to generate one in Merlot since, what, 2000. But we need really to rethink those standards and how we can bring it, you know, for OER and mainly for H5P-based open education resources. We need to build a community of leaders, the decision makers. We need to engage them, you know, and uh, we need some training and workforce development. Rao and I are dedicating right now in really developing quality online courses to prepare faculty and professional 
to design, you know, open education resources based S5P. I am sure Raul is going to tell you about what we're offering in 2022 in, if you are interested. And the last one, building locally and sharing globally. Whatever is done in an area of the globe, we need to think about doing what? Sharing it. That's what open is, you know, and giving the order the opportunity to be able to take the resource that you offer in there to change it so that they can adopt it. Whatever we learn at one point, we need really to share it with the other people. That's what building locally and sharing globally means to us. So if we go to the next slide, I think we're just uh, wrapping up pretty much these things. Uh, uh, one uh, startup that I was talking about where, you know, Rao and myself are leading. I am here in West Africa, as a matter of fact, to enable different partnership for this. That is the Digital Education Consulting Group. And we're looking forward to having distributed expertise and partnership with whom we're going to be working together some, to be able to address some issues at the global level, really, in, particularly in developing countries, really. So we're looking for partnership and all that. If you are interested, get with, with us. And if you are in the, the OER, you know, deployment research and you have a green company, you know, that is targeting Africa and, and other stuff like in India, we would like to know about you and try to see how we can work together. And, and I think the, the other slide, we're just trending toward the end here. Uh, the slide, something we're doing right now in Senegal. I am, you know, you know touring all Senegal, identifying some, uh, you know, uh, K-12 system, elementary school, middle school, and high school in this arena to bring them a little bit to the open education, you know, arena in there. We need to reach out, you know, to the lower level in there. No. So this is something that uh, DEC is right now doing in, in Senegal as we speak. And we go to the last one. I think uh, I just wanted to thank everything, everybody here, and wanted to hand it back to my good friend, Sushumna. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. And uh, uh, when you spoke about your recommendations and the, the work that we are doing, uh, I hope uh, uh, I hope uh, people are interested towards contributing to the this uh, uh, great global initiative. Uh, when when we just saw the uh, the map uh, according to the OER World Map, the languages may not be. Like I, one example is uh, me uh, trying to motivate people in my regional languages to develop OER, but hardly any. I can just count on my fingers. And I came to know that in, uh, in uh, French also got, got a different dialects and they need uh, various uh, types of resources too. So, uh, so uh, the moment uh, a professor said about this i'm also traveling in the same boat i'm also trying to motivate people and then increase uh, the openness and then reach out every learner that's where this dei comes diversity inclusion and equity right so i really thank uh, we are camp global for this wonderful platform to reach many people and talk about voice our uh, our options and opinions and to discuss various things uh, i mean where we all think on a same line same thread that is oer open educational resources and openness